good? Good, good, yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. So today we're going to talk about the very simple yet uh, kind of a landmark, Lick It Up, which was the first album they released without their, you know, iconic makeup. So right. um, I guess the obvious question would be, when did you first learn that they were going to take off the makeup? Was that a shock? It just was uh, the talk around the office for a while that it was probably going to happen eventually, and then it eventually happened. So, what was the what was the state of mind of it? Did you hear people at work at how Marx advertising saying, "Oh, they should do it. Oh, they they shouldn't do it." What was the kind of the, the buzz around? It, well, that's right. There were there were uh, there were different opinions flying around. Uh huh. Uh, I don't, this stupid phone keeps ringing. I don't know why, uh, uh, I couldn't really figure out why they wanted to take it off. But I also understood that they were probably tired of it. Mm -hmm. uh, and they were at that stage of their career and the way things were going that they needed to try something new. And they were also probably tired of not being recognized mm -hmm. as uh, big stars. So the uh, being anonymous uh, was fine for a while, but then it, you know it'd probably be a lot more fun if people adored them and screamed after them and asked for their autograph on the street. Yeah. And this was also right about the time that Gene started uh, just making his way through Hollywood. So yeah. he, wanted, he wanted to be a, a movie star, and that's yeah. How he if he, that's how he got successful in, in the movies, uh, that would have been the end of Kiss probably. Right. Paul, Paul kept everything going. He was the... So was it always uh, the decision to take a very uh, minimalistic photo of themselves without their makeup? Yeah, I mean, and, and the thing is, that thing kind of snuck past me, that whole album. I don't know what I was doing at the time besides Kiss and the agency. Mm -hmm. I can't remember uh, what other projects that I was dealing with, but I guess I heard, uh, Claudio, that it was going to be an album. It was going to be called Look It Up, I guess. I don't even know if they told me that. But they just went and had the photo taken. The usual way would be they say, we have an album. It's, it's, here's the title. And do you have some ideas? Uh -huh. And uh, But that's not what happened. Uh, I think Bill O'Coin just called uh, Bernard. Bernard took that, right? Yeah. He probably just called Bernard and said, uh, you just take a picture of the guys, the down and dirty, white background. Uh, let's just take it. It's going to be simple. So you weren't you weren't at the photo shoot, like all no, way. I didn't go. I didn't go to that. No. Mm. I don't even know if I knew the day it was being taken, because sometimes I couldn't I couldn't do everything. So, uh, but just I don't think I was even aware of the day when that was being shot. I think I just had the photos come to me, and then we went through them and and picked out the best one as usual. So I was okay with me. Um, and I guess the, uh, the simplicity had a lot to do with, you know, they were un unveiling their natural faces. And so that was enough of concept. Even the logo is color colorless, it's transparent. Oh yeah, that, uh, that was my decision again. Oh, yeah. that was your decision, okay. Yeah. Because it was the same as the uh, solos. Right. So I said, okay, if they want this to be uh, stark, white background, they're really not doing any funny kind of posing. Um, I said, well, uh, I'll, I'll keep the logo real, uh, you know, bare bones. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that was it, you know. And the type, I, I just chose a, uh, the typeface called avant-garde. Oh, it is avant-garde. I yeah. thought it was. <laughs> yeah. And I, I just thought it, would, it went well with the sim simple <coughs> white. And there you go. That was it. I mean, I didn't do a hell of a lot on that one. It was a, it was a very simple choice for the, for the, uh, the title font. Because uh, I believe, but correct me if I'm wrong, but at this point, this type of lettering was kind of European looking, right? The sans serif. Yeah, international, maybe you could say. Yeah. International, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who is 
Danny Goldberg, who is uh, credited as creative consultant. Who's that guy? What's the name? Danny Goldberg. It's credited. Oh, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's credited after uh, Bernard and Howard Marks. Howard Marks Advertising is credited as cover design. And yeah. Then, and then this is a creative consultant, Danny Goldberg. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember who he was. So we had people, people around, you know, part of O'Coins o people. So, so it wasn't part of Howard Marks? No. Aha. Uh -huh. Part of O'Coin. Interesting. Okay. They had all these people around at uh, names, but uh, what they did, you know, publicity and public relations and something to do with the band, something to do with the road crew. And so I, I don't know who the hell they were, half of them. I saw them. Hey, how you doing? You know, but. I never really got much into their lives or conversations. It's just uh, faces. So um, by this point, um, I think if I remember correctly, I read uh, uh, Chris Lentz's book. And uh, I think Howard Mark started making its way more into the management side of KISS uh, by this point, right? Around 1984, 85. And it was, which was right about the time when Bill O'Coin was fired from the yeah. manager job. Um, yeah, I was going to ask you if you knew that uh, year because I forgot. So uh, yeah, that would be it because when Bill left or was fired, um, Howard kind of just was there. And so it just by, landed by default on the job? Like default, yeah. He was basically, he was their uh, business manager, but then he became their manager. Right. Which is a whole different thing. Uh -huh. So the Glickman Marks part of things, that was money management. Right. That was Howard and his partner, Carl Glickman. But then Howard Marks was the agency and the management. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or Glickman Marks management. I don't know. You, all the same people, all the same office. Yeah. The reason they, they took off their makeup was not only uh, that they considered that the makeup was kind of a dated gimmick, but also they needed something to put them back on the spotlight because even Creatures of the Night, even though it's widely regarded as one of their best albums musically, it didn't do well. They were in dire straits. They, the tour didn't do well. They were playing to half fill arenas. They were pay, playing in like 10,000 arenas for 2000 seats. So, um, you know, the rest of the arena was courting up and they just have a few people in the front of the state. So the Creatures of the Night tour in terms of sales and attendance was a disaster and the album didn't do much better. So, um, which a lot of people consider to be a, a kind of unfair because it was, you know, the first real good album they released in, a, in, a, in kind of a few years. So do you remember any of that being just disgust in the in Howard Marks how bad they were doing um, money wise. I not not me personally. I don't remember too much conversation about that. But I, I, the only thing I can say is that in general you could get the feeling around the office mm -hmm. that things were this or this. You know, mm -hmm. excitement or just kind of low key. And I never thought too much about it. I didn't want to try to figure out why. Everybody seems so gloomy, maybe. <laughs> but, uh, you know, so it really wasn't my thing. And I don't remember too many conversations about that at all. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just the way things went. It was up and down, up and down. Mm -hmm. and, and also, this, uh, this was right about the time when Kiss stopped being uh, kind of leading edge and started being followers, meaning they started paying attention to what other bands, younger bands, were doing right about this time, like the Mother Cruz, the Rats, the Bon Jovi's, you know, all the bands that they were trendy in uh, uh, Hollywood, Los Angeles, right? So yep. they started kind of paying attention and copying to an extent what other bands were doing. Were you ever given the instructions or, 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 or the advice to look up for what others were doing just as a reference or as an inspiration? No? No. Although it makes sense, you know, and then you've been around for a while and you have your ups and downs and, uh, you know, they put out a lot of records and some years 
Seems like they put out three records uh, almost in, in the space of a year. Yeah. Uh, plus touring and all that stuff. So you cannot be that creatively fertile for that long with that kind of consistency. You know, you're going to have a lull and your energy and your creativity and your interests are going to be here, there, and everywhere. They had a little money, you know, so they were looking around maybe and thinking of other things. And so it, it kind of makes sense that you might start uh, paying attention to what other people are doing for inspiration or plagiarism. <laughs> I wanted to get your perspective on it because, you know, you were the, cr the creative guy that was there almost from the beginning. So I wanted to get your yeah well, from actually from the beginning. I mean, I, I I was there from the beginning. Yeah, right. I was I was there the day after Bill O'Coin met them. You know, he they were in the office mm -hmm. the next day. Seventy three. So you were there to witness all the up and downs. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Yeah. Uh, although, like I say, I didn't pay a lot of attention to it, but uh, you could feel it. Mm. So. Um, uh, let me add, let's go back to the photo shoot and uh, the design of the sleeve itself. Uh, there's been a lot of rumors that the picture on the cover is a collage. It's a photo composition. Yeah, I know. I, I, you know, I, I don't remember getting uh, different shots and having to put it together. Because if that happened, it would have been me who was the one who would have implemented it. Nobody else. Uh, you know, the photos come to me and then I, I work with them and make an album cover. So... I don't, I think, I don't remember even putting two shots together. I, now you look, somebody could come up someday and show me, well, here's a shot of three guys, but here's the one of Paul that was actually, well, you know, and I'd have to say, well, that's just my memory. It didn't, you know, I didn't remember that, but uh, I don't remember having to put together any shots. Well, the reason uh, I think uh, the origin of some of those rumors is the fact if you look at the picture, Vinny kind of looks weird because his arm is like behind Eric and he, yeah. looks like he doesn't have an arm. <laughs> I know, I know, but that's just the way he's standing. Uh, I'm looking at, um, I have my little mini card here. Your mini, <laughs> your mini card, yeah. And, uh, I mean, you can see how Paul is, is standing you know, behind Gene, really pretty much the same way as many as behind Eric. Really yeah, he's got his shoulder behind the other guy's shoulder. Yeah. So you get this. Uh, so that's all it is. Which was also a very, that, that kind of pose where all the guys are kind of <laughs> compressed together is very 80s. If you look at the pictures, uh, promo pictures for uh, uh Oh, Rock is it Roll. really? rock and roll bands in the 90s, they were trying to stay uh, so away from each other as possible, like separated. And then in, in, if you look at all the magazine pictures in the 80s, they're all like touching shoulders and the chest are like compressed together. Who knows? Like, yeah, who knows? The 80s thing to do. <laughs> also in the liner notes, there's uh, a credit for a poster that was never ever included on inside the jacket inside the the liquid up lp and uh it's credited to a guy named bruce davidson now researching this guy i realized he uh, is is a he's a photojournalistic sociopolitical photographer i mean he does a lot of uh um, journalistic photos of social and or urban decay of the 1960s and and 70s, and he had in, in his body of work, it doesn't have anything remotely related to celebrities or, or rock bands or anything like that. It's mostly black and white, very artsy, very, uh, very political, very, uh, I guess, meaningful, deep. So, uh, uh, did you reach out to this guy to license one of his photos or what? No, uh, because this. This is a little bit of a mystery. Mm -hmm. um, um, I don't recall any discussion mm -hmm. about buying an image from him or using an image from Bruce Davidson. Um, I don't, re I guess I was the guy who put together the inner sleeve. Right. The and yeah. 
Right. So, but I just don't remember saying anything about a poster on Bruce Davidson. I have mm -hmm. No memory of it. The only thing we can talk about really is conjecture. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, what we think may have happened or why we think we wanted to use an image from this photographer. I looked him up mm -hmm. and at first his name was not ringing a bell. But on second thought, he was well known. He was pretty well known for the type of photography that you describe. He's an award-winning photographer. Yeah, he's very good. Huh? Yeah. He's very good. Social commentary. It's kind of like street photography, what you would right. call it. Yeah. Uh, and uh, anybody who knows about photography, they might recall the name of Cartier Bresson. Yeah. Who kind of invented snapshot photography, street photography, just people and situations, nothing posed, nothing set up. Most photographs taken without the knowledge of the people in them, many of them, not all. Spontaneous scenes about people. Yes, and it's social commentary. Social it commentary. Usually, it has a, it, it, there's usually a little message there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Look at these poor people. Or isn't that a funny looking lady with her little dog? I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's social commentary. Social and, commentary, uh, yes. Very well done. You have to have talent. Mm -hmm. You have to have a good eye. Yeah. It looks like anybody can do it, you know, but you can't. You can't. You see people who try it and who don't do it well, and it just falls flat. Uh, but the good ones, uh, they are good. So why would Kiss choose a photographer like him mm -hmm. to use an image that he's sort of known for, that style, genre? Mm -hmm. And... Uh, why would they? And we can only we can only guess. Speculate, yes. I I um I don't know if you know if you're aware about this, but do you remember the two promo music videos they did to for this album? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they're very similar. They're very similar, but you can different. You can separate them because one has girls with swords and the other one has girls with food yeah. huh? is this is this the video for look it up is this the one because i didn't look up i didn't look it up lately for our talk today so uh <laughs> is this the one where they're walking four abreast and they're walking and singing toward the camera yeah you know, look it up yes. look it up and uh, i always remember it for gene's face because no makeup. Yeah. So Gene doesn't know what to do with his face. He's he's lost. Yeah, he's trying to he's trying to he's doing that. He's clearly doing the demon. He's without yeah, makeup. So he's trying to look tough. If you look yeah. at his expression. He's like this. Yeah, and he's acting a little bit and he's doing like, his with his face. Like with his chin really you know. Yeah. You know. <laughs> so it's it's terrible, I think, but you know. The poor guy was behind the mask for so long. Yeah. So, but aren't Paul, they walking? Paul, Paul is Paul is absolutely in his element in that video. He is dancing and shaking, and he's and happy to show the, his face. Yeah. He's doing all these moves. Yeah. Oh, he's 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 perfect. But um, is this? Aren't they in the South Bronx or someplace? Yeah. They the. Uh, uh, the Lick It Up video, not the All Hell Breaking Loose video. Uh, I think the All Hell Breaking Loose video was shot in a studio. Uh, but there's, a, there's a, 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 a short scene at the beginning where they seem to be on an alley or something. But that, that could have been shot anywhere. But in the Lick It Up video, you can actually see the location. And it's like rubble and all these decaying right, buildings. Right, right, right. All these so decaying they're, they're... buildings that... They were, as I understand, uh, uh, several blocks of condemned buildings in the Bronx back in the, uh, that became like that, like during the 70s, you know, and they were yeah, completely it was, abandoned. It and, was a uh, symbol of, so, of, of, of urban blight. Right. It was, the South Bronx was a symbol for urban decay. And uh, it was blocks and blocks and blocks, entire neighborhoods 
and entire blocks, not just a few buildings, that were rubble, that were down. Landlords abandoned their buildings because they couldn't make any money on them. They were paying, you know, taxes to the city and the state or whatever, not collecting rent or sporadically. Mm -hmm. And they found it to be much better to just walk away from their building. In many cases, set them on fire. Yeah, that was a that was a arson. Arson was a thing in the seventies, huh? The what? Arson was a thing in the yes. 70s. Yeah, they, in the landlords would burn their own buildings down. Sure, uh, they to keep them was just a, a money drain. So there's the connection that we I just didn't think of it before. Mm -hmm. The connection is Bruce Davidson shot a lot of what you would call urban decay. Mm -hmm. Uh, poor people, mm -hmm. poor neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. He shot up in Harlem a lot. Uh, and so they had that little bit of their video walking on empty lots, mm -hmm. you know, rubble, like you said. Yeah. And, you know, that was that's a good enough connection. And then on the inside, you'd have this black and white, because he shot in black and white mostly, I believe. Well, all of it is black and all white. All of it, yeah. I didn't yeah. even see any color. And so... Uh, to have a nice black and white poster in there of one of his uh, great photos, yeah. it would be kind of it would kind of uh, match up a little bit. Uh huh. Yeah. You know, I thought it was there was no connection at first. Mm -hmm. Like, why would they throw it in there? It seems like an odd thing to do. But now I'm thinking it's not an odd thing to do. Their video had a little bit of that, and yeah, there you go. And they were maybe they were just trying to be relevant and not popular culture but more social commentary culture mm -hmm. so if I, if i'm guessing who would have suggested something like that like out of the left field as you said i i would have to say paul because he was the one art inclined of the band and he was probably aware of bruce davidson and his photography you know maybe from a show in in new york because he, he was from new york bruce davidson you know, so uh, I'm guessing Paul, maybe. I, I think probably 100% Paul. 100% mm -hmm. yeah. Paul. Uh, he yeah. was uh, the guy who came, you know, to the office with his uh, graphic ideas, mm -hmm. album cover ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, his his He had input. Uh, really, nobody else did. Mm -hmm. Even Gene didn't. You would think he would, but he, he didn't. It was Paul who came to the office by himself. He'd walk in. He'd know kind of what was going on. Maybe I was in the middle of designing something, you know, and he would come in either just to look and talk or to, or he'd have an idea. You know, he gave me an idea for asylum, gave me an idea for crazy nights mm -hmm. that we kind of went with his idea a little bit. We didn't do it exactly, but it was the beginning of, of you know, a direction. Right. So it was always Paul. And mm -hmm. I would think that this was Paul. Yeah, absolutely. Who was the producer? I'm looking up. Uh, Michael James Jackson. It was him. So there's a remote possibility that it was his idea. Maybe, maybe my, uh, Michael James Jackson was a pretty, uh, pretty impressive guy. He, I talked to him. He was very uh, well versed in a right. lot of subjects. Right. So, yeah. You know. Yeah, if he's knowledgeable about stuff, uh, yeah. You know. That's the first thing that's that strike you about him that he was yeah. a very uh, uh cu cultured person you know yeah so it could have been him and i i met him very briefly uh during uh uh the creatures album uh -huh. and i was i had it on my drawing board and uh, my layout and he came with uh with paul i guess i think it was just those two and, and he had comments about it you know but he liked it a lot uh he wanted me to if you recall he liked the roughness of it. All right, and they started suggesting to use the actual, uh, the actual layout that you. That yeah, you, you know, know, spraying it with blue yeah, paint. Yeah. The, the spray bottles weren't working correctly, so it was spitting a little bit. Yeah. And I, you know, and I, I was cutting up all the stats. No, no, we get, we get the idea. It's art, it's rough, but yeah. Yeah, and I don't, I don't. I'm not against that, you know. Uh, but I was against it in that particular case. Right. So, but I think we can only speculate uh, 
which picture they were planning to use. Maybe a decaying building, maybe people looking in an old window. I don't know. You have all kinds of photos all over that place. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, which one? Well, you know, um, and I did look at a few. And uh, there are some that would be uh, pretty appropriate. You know, uh, uh, there's a lot of stuff he shot in Harlem or the Bronx. Mm -hmm. uh, decrepit buildings, uh, people not looking so hot. I also saw some uh, young people making out. <laughs> were you in? Were you in any of the photo shoots of the band during this era? You know, with Billy uh, Vincent, no makeup. I guess I'd have to see the photos because I don't remember. Uh, I had nothing to do with the cover. Mm -hmm. They they went and shot it and handed it to me. I was actually a little surprised. Mm -hmm. But I think that they felt, or at least Bill, well, Bill wasn't with them anymore. Bill was born. But the band or whoever must have felt that they were uh, familiar and friendly enough with Bernard Vidal that they could just call him and say, we have a simple shot. Uh, you know, maybe they, they didn't feel like they needed me. There was no concept to it, no props, no background. You know, that white white no scene. Look it up, which exactly. goes with the it goes with the uh, the first album with no makeup. There's a good cover for that. So uh, apparently they called Bernard Vidal who shot it, and it was a simple picture. They didn't need an art director to be there. Right. Um, what about what about any of the other photo shoots? The one where they were in more colorful clothing? Yeah, well, I'm trying to remember what shots those were. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we did stuff with Bernard. It must have been around that time because it was those costumes. Mm -hmm. uh, wasn't those what I call the fantasy shots? Oh, no, they were wearing makeup. No, the, the Lick It Up photos were kind of a plain, plain backgrounds. Um, um, I guess uh, a red background, a black yeah. background, but they were wearing like leather and pieces of animal, little pieces of animal prints and and bright colors like uh, like uh, pink and 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 uh, turquoise and you know those weird kind of uh, intermediate colors. And I don't remember being at those shoots. Okay, I don't. There were there were certain times in their history and wherever they were at in their life and whatever the album was and what was going on in the office. And, you know, mm -hmm. there's just certain shoots I did not go to. They were probably not necessary for me to be there. Okay. All right. That's fair enough. Very, very straightforward. Uh, no seam background. Yeah. Yeah. Well, a lot of the pictures that I've seen from that era are also probably from a magazine, maybe. So they did, they, they used their own photography. Exactly. They were publicity uh, kind of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, there's a, another thing that I wanted to ask you about, uh, and, and it's this illustration that was used in the, in the tour books and in some of the t-shirts that had a big tank firing. Uh, and that's clearly a very good fantasy illustration. Did you, did you commission that? No, I didn't. I was uh, out of the office for uh, vacation or I think I was in rehab. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, I did. I went to rehab for a little while. Um, it was a good thing because I, you know, I was reaching my uh, end of my rope <laughs> with everything, you know. So I said, let me, let me, let me straighten out, which I did. And uh, uh, so they, they probably couldn't wait for me to leave the office so that they could all. <laughs> Well, start jumping in on the the kiss creative part. So they uh, Roseanne, I think Roseanne Shelnut. Yeah, she I think she hired this guy. So when I came back, it was already done. And I you said, never, you never did. You never liked that tank. I didn't like it anyway. Yeah, I didn't like it anyway. Uh -huh. uh, I, I think that illustration. I'm not. I'm not dissing the guy. The guy has ability, you know, and stuff like that. Yeah, it's but a I, good. I, I, it's a very good illustration. Yeah, I guess so. But I, I see it differently, mm -hmm. and I see it done done a little differently. And so, in my mind, it's not the way it would have come out if I was handling it. But right. I, I, I understand. 
I understand. Yeah. And it ended up being a huge part of the stage show as well. They yeah, did. I know. They, they did a tank. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Hey, uh, do you know that there's a there's a version of Lick It Up, the, the jacket? You know, oh. This, where the inside of the logo is pink. I never saw that. It's a... Uh, I don't remember if it's an Argentine. I saw the European logo, you know. Yeah, well, yeah, that's a German logo. It's because, you know, the other uh, two S's. But there's a version, I think it's Argentinian. Uh, well, I'm going to receive a lot of messages uh, correcting me if I'm wrong. I'm sure. So the inner part of the logo is pink. I think it's an Argentinian version. And it's an official, you know, a legal uh, uh, record label. Somebody... Somebody thought, you know, that they could improve it. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> There's color missing here. How dare you? Yeah. Look how weak that is. You know, it probably would have been a cool thing if they put in that uh, Bruce Davidson. I think that would have been a cool thing. I, 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 I would say most rock and roll metal fans would have it would have been a, a big head scratcher for them. They would be, yeah, it would be. It would be, yeah. What the hell is this? But it, it, but it would have been an image that kind of goes along with the, the video a little bit. Uh, yeah, if if we have to stretch the connection. It doesn't go bit. along with the title. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> nothing, <laughs> nothing to do with the title, yeah. Yeah, unless unless they use one of those uh, uh, pictures of uh, young couples making out, you know. Well, the uh, poll said that the concept of the album was about enjoying enjoying life and enjoying life plentiful. You know, right? That's right. what. That's well, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, well, I guess that sums it up. I mean, there's, there's not. Yeah, much I guess so because there's no back cover to talk about. No, there's nothing. And, uh, we did minimal. nothing. Uh, we did no fancy inserts. No, everything is very minimalistic. Just yeah, this is the minimal. Yeah, yeah. yeah white and black. Yeah, and I guess that was our concept. Keep it minimal. Keep it clean. Mm -hmm. All right, well then, this was a short one. <laughs> short. So uh, the next one uh, is going to be Annualize, which kind of um, started what many consider the cheesy era of KISS. I don't see it that way, but I guess we'll talk about it. Okay, so, so you, uh, yeah, uh, nothing, nothing. So I'll see you in the next one, Dennis. Okay. Bye. Bye.